blessed. Dear friends, in the previous story, didn't we see the five Amorite kings who came out against Gibeon? In today's story, we will see what happened to the Gibeonites. When the kings of the Amorites came to attack the Gibeonites, they sent word to Joshua at Gilgal. Even though the Gibeonites tricked them, Joshua was ready to help them. So, with God's permission and all the people of war with him, he went up from Gilgal at night. They struck down the Amorite army as far as Azekah and Makeda. At that time, Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the Israelites. And he said in the sight of Israel that the sun should stand still at Gibeon and the moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun and the moon stood still until the nation took vengeance on their enemies. The sun stopped in the sky and did not set for the whole day. There has been no day like it before or since when the Lord heeded the voice of a man. And the Lord threw down large stones from heaven on them, and they died. There were more who died because of the stones than those who were killed with the sword. It was the Lord who fought for Israel. These five kings fled and hid themselves in the cave of Makeda. When it was told to Joshua, Joshua required that they throw large stones against the mouth of the cave and set men by it to guard them. The rest of the army continued the battle. When Joshua and the sons of Israel had finished striking them with a great blow until they were wiped out, all the people returned safe to Joshua in the camp at Makeda. Then, Joshua struck down the five kings and hung their bodies on trees until evening. At the time of sunset, Joshua took down their bodies and threw them into the cave where they had hidden themselves, and they set large stones against the mouth of the cave. Then Joshua fought and captured the kingdoms of these Amorites. Joshua left none remaining, but devoted to destruction all that breathed, just as the Lord God of Israel had commanded. Joshua struck them from Kadesh Barnea to Gaza, and all the country of Goshen as far as Gibeon. Don't you remember the names of a few of these places? Thirty-eight years ago, when God told them to possess the Promised Land, Moses sent twelve men in the old generation, including Joshua and Caleb from Kadesh Barnea, whereas Goshen was the place where the Israelites spent 430 years of their history. It is under the control of Egypt, but it is close to the Promised Land. In Joseph's time, when Jacob and his family came down to Egypt, Joseph placed them here. Since the Egyptians didn't like shepherds, and because this place was good for cattle, Joseph gave them this place. Joshua captured all the land of these kings. Then Joshua returned and all Israel with him to the camp at Gilgal. But Israel had more battles to fight. All the remaining Canaanite kings came together to fight Israel, and they came out with all their troops, a great horde, in number like the sand that is on the seashore, with many horses and chariots. And all these kings encamped at the waters of Merom. And God gave them as well into the hands of Joshua. And Joshua did to them as the Lord said to him. There was not a city that made peace with the people of Israel except Gibeon. The Israelites fought and captured all the other cities. And Joshua and the people of Israel defeated on the west side of the Jordan 31 kings. Haven't we already seen in the previous stories that Israel had captured the land on the east side of the Jordan under the leadership of Moses, the servant of God, and given it to the Reubenites, Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh? So Joshua took the whole land, according to all that the Lord had spoken to Moses. Joshua cast lots and divided the land among the tribes, and the land had rest from war. The Levites who got the priesthood had God as their inheritance. Even though Joshua had given them rest, that rest wasn't eternal. God has for his children a rest beyond this rest. Let us leave the rest of this world which is to pass away, and let us strive to enter the rest of God, being obedient children. In the next story, we will see what was the inheritance of Israel and the end of Joshua's life. God bless you.